is good. It's fair to say our 2023 Bucket List Drive series ended on a high with the mightily impressive Porsche 918 Spyder. So to kick off 2024, we're starting big, really big. In fact, if we're talking about power and speed, this is about as big as it gets. Thanks to RM Sotheby's, we've been invited to the south of Spain to drive one of the greatest motoring achievements of the 21st century, the Bugatti Chiron. This particular car is one of the first three Chirons delivered simultaneously to the three largest Bugatti collectors at the time. And it stayed with that very lucky owner ever since making it the longest owned Chiron to date. Right up until it goes under the hammer at the RM Sotheby's Paris auction on the 31st of January. The Chiron is a mighty collection of huge numbers and I'm gonna try and put some of those numbers into perspective in this film. But I also want to know, is it just a feat of engineering to display in your garage or do those numbers translate into a driving experience beyond that of a regular supercar? Now, this isn't just any Bugatti Chiron. Something that we really should mention is that this is one of the very few Chirons to be named by the factory. Allow me to introduce Le Mer Argenti. Translated into the Silver Sea. The name is reflected quite literally in the color scheme of the car. And as I mentioned before, this is one of the first three Chirons to be delivered from the factory back in 2017. A very special Bugatti indeed. When you're in here, you really are treated to some meticulous attention to detail, like this switch gear which has been machined from a single billet of aluminium. It's the sort of quality you'd expect in a Bentley rather than a 261 mile an hour monster. And look at this speedo, which goes all the way around to 500 kilometers an hour. The windows are double glazed in order to reduce noise at speed and we're only just scratching the surface of the quality at work in here. After just two years of ownership, the owner sent this car back to Bugatti to have fitted the sport package, the chrome wrap and the EB grille. This is just one of three cars to carry such a grille. The total cost? €187,000. So far, the only people to have driven this car is the owner, a lovely chap called Enrique, who stores and looks after the car, and now, me. Time, I think, to press this button that simply says, engine. The biggest achievements of this car that boasts figures such as 1500 brake horsepower and 1600 newton meters of torque is that, well, it drives pretty much like a normal car. By which I mean it drives like your average high performance sports and supercar. Getting this amount of power from an engine almost always results in big flat spots in the power band. But the Chiron uses a unique quadruple turbo system where the first two kick in and the second two are completely closed off until you get higher up the revs when the second two kick in and everything goes a bit bonkers. 
So how does it feel to drive? Well, a lot of work went into making sure that this was a lot more lively than a Veyron. They increased the size of the front tires and then reduced the size of the rear. So the turning is much better and the rear end, if anything, can occasionally step out. It feels light and nimble and it somehow manages to mask its near two ton weight deficit extremely well. But when you get on that loud pedal, it's just ballistic. But the main event really is the power. It's unlike absolutely anything I've ever experienced before in my life. When you start to get up the revs, it sounds like a jet fighter. The turning, mated with that monstrous acceleration out of a corner, makes it extremely addictive. You just want to drive this car faster, which is kind of the point, but when you see all the attention to detail that has gone into the inside of this car, it's sort of a, it does so much. I'm getting mixed emotions here. Is it a track weapon or an Autobahn Annihilator? I'll give you a clue. It's both. So some stats for you. 0 to 60 in a Chiron is 2.4 seconds. The way that you can put power down in this car defies the laws of physics. So I mentioned putting some numbers into perspective for you. A Honda Civic Type R, it'll do the standing quarter mile in 13.5 seconds and traveling at 106 miles an hour, by which time the Bugatti Chiron will be miles ahead doing 186. A McLaren F1 will do 0 to 100 miles an hour in 6.7 seconds. In the same time, a Bugatti Chiron will be north of 125 miles an hour. The Ferrari F40, hypercar of the 80s. In the time it would take that car to get to 200 miles an hour, a Bugatti Chiron will have gone from 0 to 250 and then back down to naught again. If you want to join the 400 kilometers an hour club, you can do that in just 30 seconds, which is about the same amount of time it's taken me to tell you about the past few stats. Of course, all this power does need a way of being stopped. That's why this car has enormous brakes and a rear wing that can be used as a big air brake. A Chiron has 10 radiators, and in order to make the most of them, a staggering 800 litres of coolant is pumped around the car every minute. And then we get onto the fact that this car has got to pass an emissions test. That's why it has the largest surface area of any production car's catalytic converters. 230,000 square metres between six cats. That's the equivalent of 30 football pitches. The clutch is the largest to be found on any production car in order to connect the power to the wheels. Speaking of the wheels, at full speed, the outer rims are subjected to 3,000 times gravity, meaning the pressure sensors weigh about the same as an adult human. Over 300 hours were spent in the wind tunnel making sure this thing stayed stable at speed and 200 sets of tyres were used making sure that it handled properly. Now bearing in mind a set of tyres for a Chiron costs about 30 grand. Oh God, this is good. I wish I had longer. Chiron is without any shadow of a doubt 100% worthy of being a bucket list drive. I know there are other cars capable now of similar speeds and performance, but the level of engineering in order to make it such a usable tool sets it apart from everything else. 
This, along with many other bucket list cars, and by that I mean you really have to check out the list, will be going under the hammer at the RM Sotheby's auction on the 31st of January in Paris. Oh, 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 o